Hey, Tactical Painter back out in Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome back out to the shop. Come on back out here. Got something really exciting to announce. I am going to be putting up river table pen blanks out in the shop. So you guys have been seeing all over the place these river tables where guys are doing big pours with these really large live edge uh, slabs of wood. Well, I'm doing the same thing on pen blanks. They're turning out really fantastic. I really like the look of them. I had a customer ask if I could do it, and so I said, absolutely, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. So we've been doing up river table pen blanks. I've got all sorts of selections of woods that you can do with it, and different colors, and shift powders, and glow-in-the-dark powders, all sorts of fun things out in the shop. So today, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do one if you're gonna do one for yourself. If you wanna order them, check me out on my Etsy shop. I've got them available. All sorts of different woods, all sorts of different colors, like I said. Okay, so to do this river table blank, all that you really have to do is you have to find your center line. So for this one, I use my calipers, and I'll set it to fractions. And you can see here that this one is sitting at about 49 64ths, or roughly about 3 quarters. Now it's really easy to figure out half of a three quarter because you just take the bottom number, double it, so half is going to be three eighths. So then we just go down, we find our three eighths line. There's a half, so we're close. Three eighths, we lock that in. And now just draw a center line down your blank. You just mark it in a couple of random spots. Well, not random, one toward the front one toward the middle and one toward the end. Now I want to go about four millimeters to either side that way you can do at least up to an eight millimeter blank. Um, you could do a seven millimeter uh, slimline kit um, but it would be it'd be uh, probably close to the borders on that but you could do it. Um, so now I'm going to switch my mode to millimeters and I passed it and I'm going to go down to four. I'm going to go four millimeters I'm going to draw a four millimeter line on both sides of that. Close here, there, oh, too far. There we go. Lock that in. And now we just draw a line on both sides of that line that we just did. And that's going to give us our boundary. So now there's our boundary and we can just roughly connect those lines, you just go straight up and down there. Or you could get a straight edge and actually actually connect them. Uh, but you know this works just fine if you're if you've got a pretty steady hand. And you can actually take your finger and run it on the back side and that will also act kind of as a guide. Got my boundary there so now we just need to cut that out. Now I'm at my scroll saw here. I've got my scroll saw all set up. I turn my other light on here. Now don't mind that I've got a section missing on my plate. They discontinued this model of Hitachi back in 2015 so I can't get an insert in here anymore. So I'm just going to be super careful whenever I've got open space here in the center uh, with where my hand placement is going to be. So I'm going to start probably out toward the side. I don't really like to start in the middle because if you use that end piece that can kind of look weird. You like it to terminate in a curve. So let's turn this on so let's cut this out. And you can see in the middle there, we've got some really cool spalting that's going to show up when that gets turned. So this is going to be really neat. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go and I'm going to clean these insides up with denatured alcohol. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to set these in my oven uh, for about 20 minutes or so. Flash off any water that may be on here and it'll be ready for casting. Cast it up in whatever color you want. My customer wanted a light sky blue. 
This one actually ended up being too dark and too wide, so there were two problems with it. And so I actually recast it in sky blue, which you guys can see here. And it turned out pretty fantastic. So let's go ahead and get to that slow porn music. I mean slow pouring music. We'll show you how this pours up, and then we'll show you how it turns out. River table pen blank chucked up in the lathe. We've got both ends squared up and it is ready to turn. So I'm just going to get set up here and we'll get this going. All right, we have this sanded, and we'll get this polished up, and then uh, we'll meet you back up. We're ready to a CA finish. All right, we've got our river pen all set up, ready to go, and get a CA finish. We've got this polished all the way through 1500 grit. So now I'm just going to hit with a little denatured alcohol, give us a preview of what we're looking at here, and then we will get this going. That's going to look pretty wicked. Alright, we'll let that dry and then we will hit this with our CA finish. We're going to be using Glue Boost today. We've got our medium CA here. And we're going to hit it with our thin CA. We're going to do two coats of medium and then three coats of thin. Turn your lathe speed down to your slowest speed. Get a little medium CA on there and then just go back and forth. Hit it with our accelerator and that will seal it on there. We can see already that this is going to be gorgeous. We'll do another coat of medium and then we'll get onto our three coats of thin. Alright, now our three coats of thin. Alright, that's all done setting up. I'm going to go uh, re-true up the ends and then I will get this uh, re-polished up and I'll see you guys back when we're ready for a little hut ultra gloss. Alright, so we got this all polished up. It is looking fantastic. Now I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of hut ultra gloss just to bring out that final beautiful glossy sheen that this is just bound to have. That glue boost is really wonderful stuff. I really like the the final product that it produces. 
really happy with it. I've actually started using it exclusively as my finish of choice with woods and hybrids. Works really well on both plastics, AC fin er, uh, CA finishes, and woods. It's just lovely. Alright, just a little hot ultra gloss on there. Just buff that in. I'm going to turn on the lathe. Turn it up. About 2000 RPM. Buff that the rest of the way in. And then we'll just clean it off. Look at how it just perks that up. So pretty. All right, so we get this put together. All right, well we're all set up to get this pen put together. Now we're gonna be doing this one in a G2 ink conversion. So we've already got our tubes cut to length and we are going to have to glue these in because as you can see, the pieces just slip in and out. They are tighter than, um, you know, they don't just slip in and out of each other easily, but they do slip out easily enough that a spring will launch that right out the back and it will not hold in there forever. So, we do have to glue it in place, and to do so, I just use a little bit of medium CA, just a couple of dots inside the tube. and then I twist this as I press it in place and that gives it a nice coverage all the way around and there it's set up. Okay, so now we just need to glue in our tip. All we have to do for that is just make sure that we've got our tip all nice and snug in there and then we back that off just slightly. Throw a couple of dabs of glue on the inside of this as well. Just let that run down, thin out just slightly. And then we press that one in place. I turn that just slightly real quick, back it off, push it in a little further and then we'll let that set right there. Then I back the tip out in order to make sure that it doesn't set up against the tip if there is any glue on there. Then take the activator, one quick spritz inside, and that'll set up anything that's exposed on the inside. And in a moment we'll be able to do our fitment. Okay, let's take our ink, put it inside here, see what we got. Thread that in. I've got a little wiggle room. Don't know if you can hear it shake. But it got a little wiggle room. It will pull out just slightly right there. See if you can see that. So it does pull out slightly. So we will set this up with a spring. That part is really simple to do. If you buy the G2 pens, the pens come with this spring. It's got a triple tight patterning on one end, triple tight patterning on the other, and then it's a coil spring in the middle. And so you just cut that in half, and then you just cut it a little bit back, a little further, a little further uh, to fit. Make sure you get yourself a nice pair of wire snips in order to do this um, because it will beat up a cheap pair of snips. There we go. And we got our two halves. Take one half, save that for later, and then we'll just use this half. Now the next step is to, to make this a flat end. So you can see right there, 
that that end points up and out. Now if that is allowed to stay like that, when you put your ink in, that end eventually might pop up over top of your ink and you don't want that. Because then it'll get stuck in there, it'll mess with your mechanism. So I just take the snips and I just grab it here and I twist that in order to point it down toward itself. Get a little further. There we go. And now we've made an artificial flat end that will seat nicer against the shoulder of our ink. So now we can drop our ink into our tube, into the body of our pen, I mean. You can see your spring sticking out there. Take our tip, thread that in. And we've got a perfect fitment. I can't pull that ink out anymore. It is seated against the back there. Now, this is okay to do as long as you hit it that with an activator, but I would not leave it like that. Um, you definitely want to um, store it overnight, not in your pen, and let your glue fully seat. But for purposes here, I'll at least let you see the final product. It's turned out super nice. Really happy with it. It's a gorgeous pen. Cap posts onto the back. Really just a beautiful pen. That nice river going through there. Turned out wonderful. both sides of it here yeah real nice pen all right that's one more down I'll get that shipped off to my customer I'm gonna take the ink out of there and let that glue fully set overnight have a full cure time before I mail that out So that was the pen. I loved how it turned out. It was beyond all of my expectations and my customer left a raving review on it. Um, I already shipped it off and sent it to them because I never post these videos before they get them in the mail. That way it's a nice surprise to them. They open the package and woohoo! This is awesome! Um, so he loved it. He actually said that it belongs in a museum and I don't know if it's quite that good, uh, but it definitely humbles me and left me feeling really good that he felt that these were that great. So. Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Share this video with all your family and friends. It really helps me out. Like it in the comments section down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you are interested in getting one of these for yourself, check me out on suitscrafting.etsy.com, as you see here or down in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today. This is Tactical Painter, signing out.